All right, we're just going to get into this, okay? I'm going to show clips of Michael Knowles, possibly Candace Owens, maybe Matt Walsh. And I'm using them as examples of what I think is going to eventually happen here. And what is happening, really, um, when we talk about trans rights. Which, by the way, it's taken me a very long time to get to this point. And, and by that I'm saying I've been trying to understand, you know, the reasons behind my transition and what's going on when people say I support trans rights. What does that mean? What is, you know, an appropriate time for somebody to medically transition? And just I've been really trying to unpack all of it for I've been, what, talking about this stuff since 2017, I think, on Twitter. Then I moved on to, to starting this channel and a podcast, which has mostly died now, but that's not the point of this video. What I'm trying to get across here is that I'm really, I'm really trying to understand how to fix all this. There's obviously a lot going on that's not right that needs to be addressed, all right? Like, I, I still stand by medically transitioning for me wasn't something that I deeply regret. It was something that made sense for me to do at the time, and I'm still okay with it today. But putting my personal feelings aside is really important here. It's really hard for somebody like me to do that because... You don't want to obviously shoot yourself in the foot, but I have to put it aside. I have to put aside how I feel and, you know, what my journey has been and address the mess that's going on today, which is an ideology, which I don't subscribe to. But I'm told that I do because I, I choose to live, you know, this way as a female that's medically transitioning, whatever. So I'm guilty by association, which is kind of frustrating because a lot of liberals that are seeing this and, and they're calling it out and they understand how how dangerously stupid it is to just treat everybody in this way, right? To reject any person that associates with someone that you don't agree with or whatever. Like it's not it's not the way to go about it. This this has been the liberal way for like five years now. Is that well, you can't be friends with so and so because they're associated with something I don't agree with because they follow a certain account on, on Twitter. This is the liberal way. And even liberals today that understand all that's happening today, that's chaotic and wrong, are still entertaining the idea of hate speech. Now, I've seen this on Twitter where I'm, you know, I follow a lot of people, gender critical, whatever, like feminists, I, I don't care. I follow all kinds of different people. And I see these takes from people that I think are very smart talking about, oh, look at so-and-so saying these hurtful things. This person should be removed you know i mean whatever like i know everybody doesn't live in 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 my country in the united states maybe you don't understand free speech but free speech is critical to everything that's happening today without it this is why a lot continues to happen in fact we've replaced free speech with preferred speech do you do you not see this and yet i still see people that just don't they don't get it you don't get it because you don't want people to say certain things about women Okay, well, block them, mute them, move on. And so to me, there, there's parallels here of people on, on the right and left still behaving like your typical leftist and right-winger. You know, to the right, it's like, oh my God, a, a person that's living gender non-conforming, like, I'm not, it's gross, it's weird. And to the left, it's like, no, hold on a second, um, so-and-so actually associates with that person. I reject that. Entirely. We can't have that around here. But, you know, there's also the, the sort of obsession with liberals to, to get women to fix this whole gender ideology issue. That they need women to address this. That women will be the heroes. And for the right, it's men. Men need to address this. Men will fix this. It's men. Men are the heroes. I mean, it's just the same stupid games. Do you not see this? Okay, I'm really, really trying here to stay in the middle, despite the fact that when you're in the middle of all this chaos, people tend to treat you like crap. But I guess what I'm just trying to get at is like, stop, stop lumping everybody into one category and stop treating people like they're on, I don't know, the wrong side of history. Because God forbid they associate with someone you don't agree with or they are an adult 
who has transitioned and calls himself a trans adult. Like, I'm sorry, but there has to be a tiny bit of nuance. But it's really important that the right people take hold of what's going on and, and try to make it better. And I don't, I don't have all the time in the world, okay? I've spent the last year working two jobs. It's why I haven't had time, you know, to be on the internet as much. Along with, of course, like other issues I had with my mental health and whatnot. But, you know, I, I've been busy. I am a busy person. I, I don't have the luxury of being an activist. I honestly don't want to be an activist either. But at the same time, people on the right and left that are, you know, trying to become like some kind of activist and, and take control of this and um, find a solution are, are just, to me, they're, they're not the right people for it because there is no nuance with, with either side. Transgender people is not a real ontological category. It's not a legitimate category of being. There are people who think that they're the wrong sex, but they're mistaken. They're, they're laboring under a and so we need to correct that To this point, he's right that trans isn't a new category of a type of person. Uh, this should be pretty obvious. There are men, there are women. Some men are gender nonconforming. Some women are. And perhaps this gender nonconformity doesn't end with just wearing different clothes. And then you could probably say that some people that are gender nonconforming would rather go through surgery and medical transition. And I'm adding that point because there's always this huge, like kind of general statement. And I say general because they typically don't clarify. And they make it seem like every person who has transitioned is like under the impression that their sex changed, that they're extremely deluded and have no idea how babies are made. <laughs> like, this is not true for all of us. I understand how some people are absolutely out of their minds. But I gotta say, I don't appreciate the lack of making that point clear, which is my issue with Daily Wire in general, is that when they talk about this, it's always just generally speaking, right? And they have huge platforms. We're talking about millions of people watching their content, which I think is an amazing opportunity to let everyone know that, hey, you know, some adults who do transition aren't crazy deluded and aren't going to demand that you use preferred pronouns or whatever. But instead of ever making that clear distinction, we're just like, yeah, we're, we're confused. We don't know uh, what sex is and we're trying to indoctrinate everybody. And obviously this isn't true of every single person, but like I said, it's never clarified. So when I see these videos coming from Daily Wire, I know that they're coming from a place of trying to fight the ideology, but it's pretty important to make it clear that this isn't every single person. People said, well, what does it mean to ban transgenderism entirely? All right, so about a week or two ago, uh, Michael Knowles made a video, or he didn't make a video, but he, I think he was talking, I believe it was at the conservative conference center something, and he talked about eradicating transgenderism. Now, obviously, as you can imagine, all the headlines that came out of that, it's pretty obvious when you say something like that, what people are going to assume you're talking about and what you're trying to get across. Um, I didn't think it was his best uh, choice of words, but whatever, I did my best to not, you know, just emotionally react and, and kind of think about what he's trying to, to say here. And what I thought he was talking about was eradicating the ideology behind transgenderism, not to eradicate uh, a person that identifies as trans or is medically transitioning or any of that. But that's how I initially took it. I thought, you know, maybe this is what he's saying. In this video, he's going to clarify this further. So we're going to take a look at what he meant when he talked about eradicating transgenderism. Well, it means that we return to the way that American society operated until approximately five minutes ago when we said that men do not have a right to present themselves as women in public life. And women don't have a right to present themselves as men in public life. And now, obviously, he didn't mention anything about ideology there. He might later on in the rest of the video, I don't know. But right now, he clarified it by saying that men and women don't have the right to present as the opposite sex. Now, you could agree with this all you want. But the fact is, 
how exactly are we going to police this if we were? You have some limits on that. We have all sorts of limits on our speech and behavior. If I wanted to right now, if the spirit moved me and I wanted to go streaking naked through the streets of Nashville, I would not be allowed to do that. That would be against the law. I, it might be my f- expression, but I don't have a right to that kind of free expression. There are all sorts of words that I might want to yell and scream and say that I'm not allowed to yell and scream and say, both because of the mores and standards and norms in our culture, but also because of the law. And transgenderism ultimately is a lie. It's a deception. It's a fraud. Fraud is not protected by the First Amendment. Fraud is not a category protected by the principles of free speech. You have no right to fraud. If, in fact, medical transition is basically mostly cosmetic, if it is just changing our appearance, but not actually changing our sex because that's impossible, then I would argue that what we're talking about is just getting rid of cosmetic surgery in general because it's all fraud. And it's not about you have to support what I'm doing, right? Like... You don't have to support what I'm doing. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree to it. But I, as an adult, prefer to live like this. And maybe Michael Knowles isn't talking about every single person. I kind of think he is, though. But, you know, where where is the problem, right? So the problem isn't in what we were told it was, right? The problem was, in trans rights anyways, it, it was in uh, compelled speech. It was in you know, indoctrinating kids. And it was also due to the fact that that biological males are impacting women's rights and that they're impacting women in, in, in female sports, right? So these were the original points that we were focusing on, right? The, these were the, the reasons that anybody was getting involved and cared about what was going on. So, so now we see that, like, it's obviously going beyond that. We're no longer talking about just that. But no, what we're talking about now is just any adult that has participated in any sort of cosmetic surgery or anything that alters our appearance that might deceive you. That's the problem. That's it right there. Okay, well now we're going into different territory, in my opinion. We're not talking about an ideology. We're going beyond that. If we're gonna go beyond that, I mean, whatever, like, that's your fight that you wanna have, that's fine, but be clear about it. But all right, I'm a fraud and I should I should get arrested because I'm not real. Even though some people make it a point to say that they can always tell. So if you can always tell, then how am I a fraud? And if I'm not compelling you to, just forget it. You know, let's just keep watching. So if you're a man and you dress up like a woman and you rename yourself Sally, you have no right to go to the, the gym and go into the women's locker room and say, no, I'm really a woman. That's a fraud. To his point about males using female spaces and whether or not they should have that right is a valid point. And you have no right to that. that so banning transgenderism, what that would mean is telling people who are a little confused that they need to get <laughs> that they probably need to get a little bit of <laughs> and they need to be normal. And just like you, I'm kind of wondering what he means by be normal, okay? My idea of normal is whether or not you are conforming to stereotypes doesn't really matter. It's you behaving in, you know, very disgusting ways, right? And I say disgusting is if you're taking some kind of fetish you have out into the public, that is what I mean. If you're, you know, especially if you're a man and you're trying to groom kids, indoctrinate them, condition them, whatever word you want to use, that to me is behavior that should not be happening. If you are a man, you have an obligation to behave basically like a man. And if you're a woman, you have an obligation to behave basically like a woman. And I'm not saying there aren't tomboys and I'm not saying there aren't foppish men, but you do not have a right to express your personality or your gender expression in any way that you want. That's what banning transgenderism looks like. And by the way, that's how our society operated for pretty much all of its history. All the way down to cross-dressing laws. There were laws against men wearing dresses in public. You know, it would have been great if he had expanded a bit on this. Like, what, what does he mean by women and men behaving in certain ways? But he didn't. He did not do that. He did, however, remind us that he's cool with feminine men and tomboys. But then he goes into talking about uh, you don't have the right to express your gender however you like. Which kind of, I, I think, contradicts everything he just said. Because you either are okay with gender non-conforming adults, or you're not. Like, there's no room for any nuance. 
And by the way, when I talk about nuance, I'm talking about people that are gender nonconforming and people that have medically transitioned, whether they're detransitioned or not. It, we all fit under the gender nonconformity umbrella, if you want to call it, okay? There are those people. To, to completely, like, neglect the fact that we all exist, then that just tells me that it's not only the ideology that you care about. You're not just trying to eradicate the ideology behind transgenderism. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump to uh, a clip of Candace Owens and then uh, Matt Walsh a bit so that I could maybe clarify my point here because I really want to be clear in, in what I'm trying to convey here. It's not um, that I have a problem with people that want to take down the ideology because I agree with that. It's, once again, who's doing it and how they're doing it. I definitely discriminate against men that paint their nails and wear dresses. I don't really care how you feel about that. You can wear your dress and you can paint your nails, but I'd prefer you keeping 100 feet away from a playground and all of the feet away from my children and me. If I see you, I'm gonna cross the street if I'm with my kids. Now, it's not that she's obligated to be around men that paint their nails. She could obviously discriminate against those men if she like, but I just find it really interesting that she reacts like this when it comes to a man with their nails painted. This to me is why the word groomer in some ways has lost meaning with some people. To assume that a man that paints their nails is just automatically going to groom your kids, it's just, it's dumb. It really is, okay? And there's been plenty of men throughout history, like, especially musicians that paint their nails, okay? I'm not saying that, again, like, I'm not saying she has to like it, but the idea that men are possibly bad who paint their nails, I just, where, again, where does that leave room for boys that are feminine and want to paint their nails, okay? So either you're for gender nonconformity or you're not, you know, and you don't have to like it. You don't have to support it. But when you make these sort of statements, I'm just like, what are you, what are you talking about? Are we talking about someone that is showing you clear signs that they're a groomer? Or are you telling me that grooming a kid is based on a man that has their nails painted? Here's a video that went viral this week. Thanks to, um, libs of TikTok. It's a, a woman grooming her son live on camera and in a department store dressing room. No, what, what appears to be a department store dressing room, no less. Uh, let's watch some of this. Okay, hold on. You love it and you want it and you picked it out, but you don't, but you don't want it for school. Can you tell me why? Because last time I wore a dress to school, everybody called me a girl. Oh. Well, what did we learn from my shadow is pink? Even when you wear a dress, you're not a girl. What makes a shirt for a boy or a girl? Nothing. So do you want this? You picked it out. I do want it. You want to wear it all the time at home, but not at school, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. I don't want to get made fun of. And that's what they always do when I wear pink and stuff. This is yet another example of a child who is gender nonconforming, but according to Matt Walsh, is being groomed by his mother. Now listen, I don't agree with her recording this and then putting it up on TikTok. I think parents make it a habit of recording their kid and then putting those videos up on social media, which yeah, sometimes it's cute, but a lot of times it's just cringe. And also, I, I don't know how that kid's going to feel when they grow up realizing that their whole life has, has already been on social media. I, I just wouldn't really do it. Not like that anyways. But, you know, to, to say that this is grooming is a bit bizarre to me because it's actually the opposite of grooming. It's quite literally a boy talking about how he likes wearing dresses sometimes, but he gets bullied at school. And they were clear that wearing a dress doesn't make you a girl. Isn't that the whole point? Aren't we supposed to say no to the stereotypes being pushed by the left? You see, this is why I have a problem with some people leading the way to fighting this ideology because they just don't really quite fully get the big picture here. It's not just fighting an ideology. It's recognizing the fact that some people are gender nonconforming 
And that doesn't make them a girl or boy, right? It doesn't make you a girl if you wear a dress, and it doesn't make you a boy if you're a, a butch girl, a masculine female. That doesn't obviously make you the opposite sex. But if the right is combating all this by saying it actually is grooming behavior to allow a child to be gender nonconforming, is this not just circling back to the overall problem? You either embrace and accept a gender nonconforming child, or you don't. And it's like, uh, I tweeted about this the other day. I said, uh, I said the left is promoting stereotypes through the guise of gender affirming care, and the right is promoting stereotypes through the guise of religion. And yes, it is about religion, okay? This is not like some wild card I'm, I'm throwing out there. This is clearly coming from an influence of religious uh, beliefs. Just like the left has their own bizarre religious belief system with this ideology, the right is also religious. And they might not mention it often. They're not saying, because I am a Christian, but it's very obviously coming from that place. And so in doing a little bit of uh, thinking over the past few weeks, I've realized that this isn't even really what the left and right are saying it is. This is clearly becoming some sort of uh, fight for the, I, I guess, the rights to be gender nonconforming, okay? Because when, when I'm looking at the left and what they're promoting is, yeah, we're talking about stereotypes on both sides. Absolutely. But the left hates, you know, the, this cis heteronormative world that we live in. The society is just too normal. We need more uh, genderless non-binaries out there. Because something that you'll learn if you've been following all this is that trans activists, they, they don't want to be othered. This is why they call women cis women. And, and trans women, women. <laughs> you know, sometimes they'll call them trans women, but ultimately, we're all going to be something more than just our sex because they want that to be normalized because the goal is to change society and change how you think. This is the point of this ideology, okay? The more kids that are indoctrinated, again, the more society is going to change in the future. The more kids go through medical transition, the more kids obviously might detransition or regret transition, but it doesn't matter because by then, there's going to be a lot of kids that grow up as adults and you won't be able to tell that they're man or woman if they detransition. This is just a fact. You know, you'll, you'll look somewhere in between both worlds, okay? So if the point here of this ideology is that they are trying to, you know, create a new sort of society. The kind of society that has uh, very little cis heteronormativity and more along the lines of a society that a, a majority is queer and, and identifies as something other than man or woman. And this is the point in many things from the leftist point of view. They want to abolish everything that we consider normal and replace it with some new stupid idea, which is typically all kind of aiming towards communism. Which, by the way, some liberals seem to think this is a good thing. Like, Marxism, yeah, we're gonna really go for that one because capitalism bad. Instead of criticizing capitalism, we have to replace capitalism with communism? Are you guys stupid? Have you not seen in history what has happened over time? No matter what kind of communism it is, in the end it all ends the same, with a lot of people dying and you having absolutely no rights because the government owns your ass. Yeah, I don't want to live in that. And you know, I'm sure I'm going to get some shit in my comments. I don't care. But put this one together, guys. Why are so many of these trans activists totally cool with communism? It's in their bios half the time. They got pronouns. They got hammer and sickle. So, I mean, you could think that communism sounds like a great utopia. But if you're a, a liberal that recognizes the harm of this ideology, and you also are critical of capitalism and think capitalism is causing a lot of problems, fair enough, and your solution is we need communism, then you're on their side, actually. And this stupid utopia that you're chasing with those dumb communists is not going to end the way you think it will. Just like the right 
is chasing a utopia of living during normal times where people are just more religious and conservative and women stay in the kitchen and men work nine to five, sometimes after hours. That's also a really dumb idea. And I don't think that I'm a centrist. I want a lot of things to come back too normal. But I also don't want a fucking utopia. Because I know that shit is not gonna happen how I imagine it to be. Anyway, that's basically everything I got here. I hope you guys got something out of this video and, you know, feel free to drop a comment below. Um, ultimately, like, listen, there's, there's a lot going on right now. And it's not about me. It's not about you. And it's not just about protecting kids and, you know, uh, fighting for women's rights or, or whatever other fight you're taking on with this ideology. It is beyond that. Bless you for just saying I am a political economist. I think it is like so important for Marxists to actually claim that. Yeah. Um, like it's actually really important. And so many of us just shy away from saying like, no, we actually ha have like really, we have so many things to say about the structure of the world. Okay, so just first of all, why do we say that trans liberation calls for communist revolution? <laughs>